I tend to give the people what they want. Yeah, let's get a taste. And money, I've got a feeling this is going to ruin the last <sighs> for me forever. That's for you. Ah, not for you. You need to go and make them. Amore, amore. See? It's a big week in Sardinia. It is a big week, a big couple of weeks. Yeah, because you know what's on? Bo Bo Carnival is on. Oh, <laughs> Carnival season. Tell us what that means for you, what that was like growing up in Santana racing. It was great because Carnival means celebration part in getting dressed up. Normally each one of the towns would have a parade. Like the parade, The parade, the yeah, stuff. and the floats, oh. yeah, brilliant. And that would be a big party with sweets, music, and dances. And now, why are we telling the people this today? Because... Because here in Ireland we don't have carnival. So I'm kind of feeling a bit nostalgic, but not just for carnival for the dessert of carnival. So today, we are making Zippoli. And for me, it's very special because my grandma used to make them every, every February. Ciao, I'm Davy. Ciao, I'm Rosella. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our new videos. Now, shall we start the video? Let's go. Let me show you what's gonna go into our butter. So we have our plain flour here, some fresh yeast, some lukewarm milk, some freshly squeezed orange juice, sugar, salt, uh, the zest of orange and lemon, a lightly beaten egg and some potato that we cooked mush. Flour is in the bowl of your electric mixer or you can do it by hand if you want. And that's definitely the way my grandma used to make the flour is in. We're gonna add the mashed potato and give it a quick stir. Give it a quick mix through to make it easier. And we need to prepare our yeast with the milk. So we're gonna just dissolve our yeast and the milk with our fingers and give it a little bit of sugar to feed itself. Then now we're going to prepare our mixture of milk and yeast to go into the dough. This needs to rest a couple of minutes so we prepare it before we start with the flour. Give it a stir and once the yeast is dissolved you just let it rest for a couple of minutes. On here and we put it aside and now we start mixing we put it on low because we need to add the other ingredients and make sure they are all incorporated before we get with the next one we start with the hook attachment and then we're gonna move to the paddle it's just flowering at the moment we're gonna add our egg and then the zest of our lemon and orange We're going to start incorporating the milk very slowly. All our milk is in and we're going to go with the orange juice. Again, very slowly because you want to give the dough time to absorb the mixture. Now we're going to change from the hook to the paddle attachment because I think it works better. Scrape all the dough off of it. It's looking good already. Yeah, and as you can see it's very liquid and that's what you want. So don't be afraid if you see that it looks stickier and wetter than any other dough you used. So we're going to finish adding our um, orange juice. And then we're going to let the dough go on its own for a five to six minutes. Good. Half a teaspoon of salt and then we'll let the machine do the work. 
Okay. Okay, uh, this has been going for five minutes now. As you can see, it is very wet and very elastic. There you go. Wow. Don't worry if it's sticky, that's the way it's supposed to be. We're gonna transfer it into a glass bowl and put it in the oven with light on, covering cling film for roughly three hours, just until it doubles in size. So now we're gonna transfer our dough into the bowl and Film. So if it was my grandma, she would put it into a big, big terracotta pot and uh, maybe set the fire to keep rice and we're just going to leave it in here and put it in our oven to proof. See you in three hours. Three hours has passed for us, for our, our viewers, a couple of seconds of interlude action. And um, have a look what we have here. That's the bar all bubbly and proofed. That looks good. Now I'm going to try and perform some magic because it's very sticky. I have a bowl of warm water here just to use to wet my fingers and try and uh, contain the damage. <laughs> now I'm going to check if our oil is ready. So then we are ready to go. We're gonna go slow because we don't want the temperature of the oil to drop um, all of a sudden. Take a bit into your hands and try and shape it like a donut like this. And gently drop it into the pan with the oil. And with a chopstick or a wooden spoon, you keep the hole and inside. There you go. And now I'll put a few more in. How long would they fry before we turn them? Uh, just a couple of minutes. You want them to be golden but not too brown. You're gonna start flipping them and I'm gonna look what the color is on the other side. Uh, I will give it another minute or so. I'm guessing you have probably many, many memories of being a kid watching family members make this. Yeah, watching my grandma make tons. I feel like today we did loads, but she would have done at least four times this amount. Seriously? Uh, yes. And I remember like my grandma and my aunts there in the kitchen cooking and making uh, tipole all afternoon. It was a feast that was there waiting for when it was my turn to taste. <laughs> so I don't know if you can hear it. That's the crust is nicely forming. And it's gonna be delicious covered in sugar. Look, the color golden, but this is the color that you're looking for. I'm getting impatience here, I cannot wait to taste. <laughs> Zep probably. Yeah. How common are you saying Uh You have different variations. I've seen them savoury. These are just with sugar and they're okay. sweet. But I've seen them in other regions of the south of Italy. Uh, stuffed with anchovies and they call them the same zippole. Get in there. Okay, the first one is ready to come out. We're gonna put it on a plate which we cover with some uh, kitchen paper just to drain a little bit of the oil, just maybe 30 seconds or so, no more. And then we're gonna transfer it to the sugar. And you don't want it to drain too much because otherwise the sugar is not gonna stick.
How many have we got so far? Including the ones in the pan. One, two, three, four. We have ten. Ten. Together. And we're what? Two thirds of the way through the batter. Yeah. You said your nana would regularly make four times that amount. Uh huh. Who's she feeding? Just festive. It's family. And what if? There's always this thing. What if somebody comes over? Mm. Like you need to have something to offer them. So yeah. Okay. It's time to give the people what they want. Yeah, let's get a taste. For you, you need to go and make them and then tell me what you think. Finally, mm. it's great. Nice. Yeah, it's still warm. <laughs> it's amazing. It's soft and fluffy, a little bit of crunch, and the taste of orange that comes through. like the video subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be a lot of more interesting content coming up but more important give it a try and then let us know how it goes take a photo tag us on the Instagram or Facebook because we're curious to know how you get it on until next time ciao okay so we're gonna make the batter now yes we are there's uh, quite a few ingredients here but I uh, <laughs> mm? Anything else we need to say before we cut? Nah. Nah. Until you start with the next one, which is your milk in the yeast. You need to pour it very, very, very slowly because you need to give time. A little bit for me to taste. Very. Very. You sounded very Scottish, I'm like. Eh, caramore. Now let's hope for the best. <laughs>